Hey folks, and welcome to the another exciting episode of Bridging the Gap. I hope you're doing great wherever you are in the world today. Welcome to the show that really, really is unlike anything else you're going to see out there. It's a show for teens and parents that examines, explores, and gives step-by-step -step guidance on how teens and parents can overcome the issues that they're facing and ultimately live a much happier and fulfilled life. I am one half of your hosting team, John Morris. Author, speaker, artist, and psychologist in training, and I'm really excited to welcome once again my co-host, the skincare specialist and the lady of many talents, Alicia <laughs> Madonna. Alicia, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you doing today? It's um, been... Uh been kind of dreary over here well i was just going to say every week folks we talk about the weather it has just started raining it was really hot and muggy earlier on and it's just started to pour down we are in scotland's uh, showery season um so yeah it's all good what's going on with you how have you how's the um, week been uh it's been crazy well, there's been <laughs> a lot happening in my life um we we're weaving it into the show today because <laughs> Because, yeah, and uh, there's been a lot of changes happening, a lot of things going on up inside my noggin. So um, I feel like this is the perfect, perfect time to sit down and talk about this all because things need to be either released from my brain or settled in my brain. So... <laughs> I love it. And that's part of the show, folks. And that's that's ultimately what we're doing. You guys essentially are getting to see what we do in life coaching sessions and you're getting to see it in real time. So as if you're sitting there saying, well, you know, I've got this issue and I've got that issue, but, you know, how do we actually overcome it? Well, we're going to walk you through step by step on how to do that. So Alicia, shall we begin? Are you excited for today? I'm very excited for today for exactly the reason that I just said. <laughs> it's been an insane week thought it was going to go much different than it actually did so I'm ready for this week <laughs> I hear you on that there's sometimes literally and that's a good segue actually uh in, into our first topic because there's sometimes we think a week is going to go you know one way and it completely goes the other so folks this is the show where we examine three topics usually within half an hour or basically how live along it takes until we run out of talking time so anyway <laughs> Make sure to watch the full thing because you never, ever know what pearls of wisdom and nuggets are going to come out of this one. So we're going to begin with topic two, uh, oh, sorry, topic one. Ah, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we're talking about thoughts today. Alicia, how do you see thoughts? What do you think about with your thoughts? I know that's a strange question, isn't it? Yeah, um, I feel like, I think because I'm an artist, I do think a lot in pictures and, you know, images. But when it comes down to like, I don't know, just like daily things um I don't know I kind of fluctuate all over the place they're good thoughts bad thoughts yeah I, I guess I'm kind of all scattered <laughs> here there and everywhere and I hear you on that because I I have been there with that one for sure okay first things first folks many people see life as something that just happens to them they get up in the morning and they put on the clothes they go to work or they go to school uh, they go and spend eight hours at school, then they come back home, and then they choose how to spend their evening. And they just see life as something that happens to them, just the routine. But it's not. And I know this is going to maybe a little bit weird and alien for you, but I want you just to, to just kind of open up every possible obstacle or every, or every um, possible place that you can and really just think about this. Life is not what happens to you. It's actually how we choose to respond to it. So, for example, on any given day, you know, someone may come up to you and be really rude and really aggressive. Now, if you're in that good place where you've been focusing on good things, you have a lot of positivity around you, you can handle that situation off air. Alicia and I, we were talking about a situation that happened yesterday uh, with, with a coaching client of mine that got incredibly offended because I was trying to help them with their business. Now, if I'd been in that really highly strong emotional state and my thoughts are really negative and really, really kind of poisonous, if I'm honest, then I would have responded in, the, in, in like, we can only give out what we have inside. But in reality, I was actually more, because I, you know, focusing a lot on my thoughts and being aware of what's going on, I was more blissed out to the point when the lady said to me, well, I'm concerned that I'm going to offend you. My response was, well, if you're concerned you're going to offend me, don't say it. Then. You know, it's kind of an obvious thing. Um, but I was like, you're probably not going to offend me because, you know, I'm, I'm choosing not to be offended. We choose literally how we respond to every situation. And that's what I really want to get you guys to think about is this. On any given day, you can feel great. And any given day, you might feel rubbish. But how do you think you would respond if you felt 
great. Alicia, how do you feel that you would respond to someone being really grumpy with you if you felt really great? How I would respond. To how it. you would respond, yes. <laughs> I um I am a bit of an empath where I kind of I feel like that that that's hard for me at times when it comes to like thoughts yeah. and like being around other people. Um I I kind of match energies. Okay. Yeah. If I am in a good mood, I am definitely more likely to respond better um <laughs> than if I was moody, I will probably snap. Yeah. Um but I, I have to be for my own self very aware of like the people that are around me and the energies that I have because I will feel it re regardless of if I need to feel it or not. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> Which um, I guess kind of can feed into thoughts. Yeah. But it's, and that is so true is that, you know, we essentially can choose our thoughts. Believe it or not, everything, and I've said this before, guys uh, and girls, that we've, we've talked about is everything that we see, touch, hear, taste, and smell came from a thought. Someone sat there one morning and said, well, I'm sick and tired of sitting on the floor. So they built a chair. Someone sat there one morning and said, I'm being, I'm, you know, sick and tired of being cold. So they made a fire. You know, it came from, someone said, I'm sick and tired of getting rained on and wind on all over the place. So they built a house. It all came from a thought. And believe it or not, we can actually choose our thoughts. But there is something, there is exceptions, of course, but there is something that really determines our response to things. And it's actually what we surround ourselves with and who we surround ourselves with, like Alicia said. So for example, if you can imagine, well, most people don't need to imagine this because this is what's happening all the time without you realizing it. If you listen to angry music, if you watch a ton of violence on TV, if you was listening and watching brutal video games and was listening to every obscene audiobook and reading every obscene book known to man, what do you think just logically <laughs> the, the person is going to respond with? the chances are they're going to respond violently. Yeah, the same as what they're intaking. Correct. We can only give out what we have inside. If you've got violence, anger, and bitterness inside you, that's all you're going to give out. And equally, if you've got love and energy and empathy and passion and everything else that's there, that's what you're going to give out as well. Have you noticed that people tend to attract to people that are nice and friendly and kind, as opposed to people that essentially, as we say in Scotland, are a butt munch that, you know, are really angry and really frustrated. I use that word, by the way, on a coaching session on Saturday night, for the first time ever. I was like, let's see what words we can put in here. But it, it's a really weird thing. But everything comes from a thought. And that's why it's so important to get hold of your thoughts. And if you don't believe me, and, and Alicia, I, I, again, Alicia's my guinea pig. We, we love doing these things on, on this show. We really, really do. But our world, believe it or not, is a, re is a reflection of the wider state of the world. Everything that you see out there, the violence that's on TV, the sex that's in the media, the negative views here, there, and everywhere are all reflected, believe it or not, within the creators of those thoughts. So i.e. Hollywood and Paramount and gosh, whatever the media channels that are out there mm -hmm. in the world. But as you come closer to your internal world and closer to home, what we see in our external world, i.e. our house, our surroundings, the people that we've got in our lives, come from our thoughts as well. It's a reflection, everything reflects. And of course there are exceptions, but the simple solution is if you've got negative disempowering thoughts that are filled with anger, you need to examine your thoughts and also what you're allowing into your life. Alicia, have you any thoughts on this just now? Yeah, I, I definitely, when it comes to how you think things through, I, I want to throw in a little bit of yep. um, like an anxiety perspective to mm -hmm. that because I know for me, when I was going through like learning to deal with my anxiety, that was one thing that my mom would try to coach yeah. me through. She'd be like, there's a lot of thoughts that you can be thinking right now. And you're kind of going, you're going ahead. You have to stay here in this moment and you have to control your thoughts. Yeah. Cause honestly, it's, it's your thoughts and an anxiety attack that will get you to spiral. That's it. it really, like when I visualize it in my head, it, it seems like a slope. And if you slip on it, you're just going to start tumbling and you're yeah. going to start going. And it's, it's training yourself to um, have specific thoughts, to not have specific thoughts, especially in those moments, which I feel like almost people with anxiety that are learning to cope with it mm -hmm. almost have an easier time when it comes to situations like this of learning how to control your thoughts and like what you allow yourself to, yeah. to think and then feel subsequently. 
Absolutely. And that's a really good point. There's, there's two points that I want to make just before we move on from, uh, from thoughts, guys, is this, you know, number one for me, whenever I'm starting to feel really anxious, um, I have devised a new way of, of learning. And I think we talked about this a little bit last week. I essentially read with my ears and I think with my mouth. I struggle with my sight at times from dyspraxia. So with audiobooks for me, I found a fantastic way to learn. So I learn and learn and learn. And what I find is when I'm fit, and literally every single day I get up, I've got specific audiobooks that I put on, specific meditations that I put on, things that I work through the day. And I'm very, very, very careful as to what I want to put out because I'm thinking, okay, my thoughts are creating my life. I'm shaping this. I'm molding this by the decisions I'm making, by the thoughts that I allow into the world. So I want to focus, believe it or not, on what I want to create. It's literally that simple. But equally, you can also focus on what you don't want to create, but that's a whole to another topic for another time. But it's ju you're just <laughs> touching that on, on a little bit. People often focus on what they don't want as opposed to what they do want. And whenever you focus on what you don't want, that's what you're going to get more of because the brain being the great host that it is and the divine spirit being the great uh, host that it is will give you exactly what you're focusing on. So you've got to always be focusing on, I want to be prosperous. I am um you know, peaceful, I am loving, I am kind, I'm caring, you know, all of the positives, it's really important. And make sure whatever you're putting into your head reflects that. So if you're sitting there saying, well, I don't want to be violent, and you're playing Assassin's Creed, for example, then the chances are, or, or Call of Duty, you know, the chances are you are going to have that violent, angry streak inside you. Because again, what we put in is what's going to come out. And the final thing about this, folks, is the, is the process going from thoughts to action. And I, I've got it in four steps. Wayne Dyer did it in three steps, but I've got it in four. Y your thoughts lead to your actions. Okay, that's obvious. So the way that it works is this. Your thoughts are the first thing. Your feelings come from your thoughts. Your intentions come from your feelings. So I, what I intend to do. And then from there, it turns into an action. So literally, and, and this happens really, really quickly. I'm going to show you how quickly it happens in a second. So it's thoughts to feelings, feelings to intentions, intentions that lead to actions. And if you don't believe how fast this happens, if I take my fingernail, so I've had a thought there, okay, my fingernail, and I poke myself in the head, literally in a nanosecond, bang, faster than I can do that, it has gone from a thought to an action. That's how fast it happens. And that's why it's vital that you get your thoughts under control by making sure what you put in is ultimately what you really want to devise and ultimately what you intend to happen in your future. Alicia, have you anything that you want to add to that? Yeah, something that um, the company that I work for, Money, that we really try to drive home, it's literally exactly this. We're all about <clears throat> words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. So it's, I am this, I am yep. that. Yep. You know, it's, it's, it's literally speaking things into existence. And it's this idea yep. that if you're thinking it, and it'll, it'll go from a thought to a feeling to an intention, to an action, just yeah. like you mentioned. And um, something that I have <clears throat> strayed from a little bit, and actually my friend, who, who was my, one of my partners, she, and I love her because she's one of those brutally honest people that would be like, you need to do this for yourself. Yeah. And she was like, you need to start listening to podcasts again. Like I was never a podcast person, but when I started this company, you know, personal development is huge. Yep. And I, I was that person. I was like, I don't need it. It's I don't, I don't need it. Um, I feel like everybody needs it. And it's, it might seem cheesy. It might seem kind of hokey when you're listening to it, but if you catch yourself later on in the day, you'll, you'll hearken back to those thoughts and, and like, and actually in our first episode, when you were just kind of coming at me with, you know, either, uh, you know, um, yeah, compliments or yep. um you know whatever that all affects how you feel and how you go through your day and that I found myself found myself thinking differently I found my perspective a lot different yep. there's a ton of podcasts out there for literally everything um and I think sometimes people have to I feel like some people are like no I don't need it and yep. they, they can't humble themselves to listen to a podcast it's just a podcast <laughs> sometimes yeah. you just need to hear those things if it's not coming from yourself, sometimes you need another source to help you um, mitigate those thoughts. Absolutely. So. 
And I completely agree. And it's true. I mean, when you say, you know, the I am statements, you know, a 2000 old or 2000 year old teaching, you know, and it's it's being aware. I know we talked about this in episode one. If you haven't seen it, go back and check it out. Um, mm-hmm. Like Alicia was saying. But when we sit there and you have the negative statements about yourself, like I am fat, I am ugly, I am this, that and the other. You know, that is, you know, what I call disaffirmation, which means basically you're decreasing yourself. You're moving away from the divine spirit that you are and the amazing person that you are. And you're sitting there, you know, basically just putting yourself down, either based on what someone else has told you or based on your faulty thinking. And when you can start saying to yourself, you know, I am love, I am peace, I am prosperous, you know, you're affirming verbally what you want to attract into your life and what you want to have into your life. And I think when people, you know, start to realize the power of words as well, they realize then, well, maybe I should be a little bit more careful with my words because, you know, it, it, it's, again, it's important. But when, you know, and, and I get it, folks, sometimes and some days I sit there and I'm like, man, I, you know, there's so many things going on in my head and I have headphones around me. I've headphones in the office, headphones in the bedroom, headphones in the studio, headphones everywhere because I put them in even days when I'm crawling. And I'm just like, I can't go on. And then I put them in and I'm like, bang, you know, we, we start listening to and it just triggers that boost within you that gets you moving, that gets you focused and it gets your thoughts shifted. All our brains work in different ways and it's figuring out the way that works for you, but you've got to take the step. Um, because mm-hmm. if you don't, like Alicia was saying, it's like, guys, you know, plugging in a podcast is far easier than going to the library and getting a book. You're literally <laughs> going to plug it on, switch it on. It's that simple. And again, statistically, 90% won't or 90% will. No, 90% won't, but the 10% will. And that's a crazy thing. It's like, well, can you do it for me? It's like, no, I can't do it for you. You got to press play. You know, it's so easy. <laughs> you literally just press play. Yeah, well, well, Jim Rowan used to do a, a great, um, a, a great bit in his uh, in his live talking, uh, where he would say, you know, a library card is free. Wisdom of the world, free. All you need to do is go and get a library card, and you go into a library, and you can research and learn anything on any topic. And you know, people were like, well, could you drop it by for me? Could you do this? Could you do that? And it's like you've got to do some effort, you know, <laughs> something that's there. Well, and now if you if you think about this library card idea as being like your past to knowledge yeah. our phones now are our yeah. library cards you know exactly. i mean the the excuse of like help me it's like you literally turn your you're, you're on your phone all the time use it yeah to help you that's and it. that's something that i've really focused on because i know that technology is here it's not going anywhere <laughs> and I, I know i've said this before but um, it's use, it's learning to utilize it yeah. for the better, I think, is what's going to make it a big difference. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and the crazy thing is when you guys and girls see what uh, technological advancements are happening, it, not only in the business world, but also in schools and in education right now, it is phenomenal. I mean, we're talking about artificial intelligence probably within the next five years. There's a lot of stuff that's going on there. Um because that's something else that I explore and examine uh, from, from business point of view, because it helps knowing these things. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it, it's incredible. You might actually have one day Super Mario teaching your classes. I mean, how amazing would that yeah. We were talking about Super Mario folks before yeah. we came on, so <laughs> otherwise it won't make any sense to them. It's on our minds. <laughs> um, well, side note to that a little bit. Um, my brother got one of the virtual reality things for the first time. Wow. And... And one of the, the things you could get was like a museum walkthrough. Yep. And as obviously as an art history person, I was like, oh my God, like I can, you can walk right up to these paintings. And I wouldn't doubt if that is the future yeah. of the classrooms. Well, well, you see that happening a lot now with virtual reality art galleries, which is mm-hmm. something I believe in the next year or so, that's something that a graphic designer and I will be putting together because um, I love the idea. Um, plus it saves you a fortune (laughs) on uh, on galleries but yeah I mean I think it would be incredible and uh, I think with the the uh, the pandemic and things it's taught people how to do things in a very different way which is really exciting so definitely absolutely I'm excited for that that'll be cool all right are we uh are we good for topic two I think we're good for topic two it's over to you all right so um, this was something that actually John brought to my attention that I should talk about this week because it, it literally coincides 
with everything that I'm going through right now. And I know there's people out there that are watching this that are definitely feeling the same way as me that are like me, where you just, it's almost like you can't say no to people. You want to help so badly. Like your initial instinct is just, yeah, I can help. I have these skills. Like, let me, let me help you. And, and you end up taking on so much and you are overloaded before you even realize it. Um, I, I, like I mentioned earlier, I think a lot in pictures and images. And I was thinking about this yesterday because I did, I did have a breakdown yesterday, full disclosure to everybody. I, I quit my job. I tried something else that didn't work. So now I'm like reconfiguring everything. And the way that I visualize it is like, I have a cup and you know, this is my level of like, I'm okay. And I have this like buffer zone from like above and below it where I'm like, oh, I'm still okay. Like I could take <laughs> on more, like I, I'm okay. And I feel like it's in that buffer zone above my overload yeah. line where I get into the danger zone where like my thought is I'm already doing this, taking on something else is not that big a deal. And it's like, you keep doing that over and over again until you're double the size of your glass yeah. and you're overflowing everywhere. And so I've really had to learn how to say no to projects and things that I want to do because I have to really got really, really be conscious of my own mental state and um, honestly having time for myself because I feel like when you're going through your day and you're thinking about, okay, how can I make money? How can I meet ends meet? How do I do this? How do I do that? The thing that's going to get put off nine times out of 10 is going to be self-personal time because you're like, oh, I can do that later. Like I always have time for that. But I really think that doing that is such a disservice to everything else that you're doing because it puts you, I, for me, I'm, I feel like if I hit a certain point, if I hit that overload line, I almost shut off yeah. and then nothing happens. And it's main, it's learning to maintain that a little bit. So I'm, I'm assuming John, that you have experienced something like this. <laughs> In your uh, yeah, life just slightly. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Uh, yeah. Um, and a, a couple of schools thought that, you know, that there was an ancient teaching. And I, I would love to show you this, folks, but unfortunately, I'm surrounded by electrical equipment, so it isn't a good idea. But if you took this mug, for example, that's filled with water, and you continued filling it and filling it and filling it, well, what's going to happen is it's going to overflow, it's going to spill out everywhere, and it's actually going to electrocute me. Um, I would probably end up in hospital, if not a grave. That's kind of like us. When we continue to fill and fill and fill and fill everything that's going on, and you know, we at some point have taken as much as we can for a short period of time. Yeah, you can possibly manage it and cope, but when it starts overflowing, water starts going everywhere. You're causing damage to everything that's going on. You become narky. You become aggressive. You become, you know, frustrated. In my case, nasty. When I was in that state, um, you know. Yep. But the other crazy thing about it is that your work that you do actually isn't as productive and the actual quality of work isn't as good because the yeah. amount of times I sat there in that state thinking, well, I've got this show to do and I've got that show to do and I've got this person to speak to and that person to interview and, and I'm doing this, this and this and this. And I'm sitting there with a painting in front of me thinking, ah, if I can just get this done because I've been painting for 20 years, I know how to paint inside and out. There isn't very much that I'm going to learn, you know, but I took it for granted. And I'm thinking mm -hmm. someone's paying for this picture and I'm sitting there, you know, with it to the side saying, well, I can do that later on, but I'm working on my own stuff now. And then I looked and I thought, no, if I, if I want to believe my own mantra, my own dharma, my own vocation in life, which is that we provide the best quality service that we possibly can, it's my responsibility to look after me. The scary thing that I found actually, and I know Alicia and I, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, that, you know, for, for me that had happened, was I started uh, a business for uh, art teaching and it's called Outreach Art. I started another business for teen life coaching. I started another business for paint our pet. I started another business for wrestling art and I started another business for my own art. So that's five businesses if you're keeping up folks. Now by themselves, when they're seeds, they're easy to manage, but then you're gonna market them. So you've got five Instagram accounts that you're gonna market on. Oh, but wait, then you've got five Facebook accounts. So now you've got 10 things that you've got to market on. 
Um, and then you've got a YouTube as well to do. Oh, wow, we've now got 15 or 16 things. Plus you've got five of the websites to work through. So you've got 21 different things here that's going on. And the problem is, as they grow and they grow, and then they all require content. So you're looking at maybe 100 things per site that need to be maintained and monitored monthly. You know, you're, you're actually ending up with something that started out as a really small thing and now has just grown and manifest into something overwhelming. And as I shared with you guys and girls and with Alicia, I believe on the first episode, I ended up seriously ill last year, tore my midsection through worry. I literally worried myself sick. Um, and it's very difficult at times when you've got all these ideas, especially when you're a creative person and you're like, yeah, I want to do this. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm resenting this. I'm not happy doing this. I don't enjoy doing this. Yeah. And it's really important to be able to say, you know, as great as an opportunity as this sounds, I also need to stop. And I, I look forward, my weekend is actually midweek now, guys, um, because we're working on the weekends and doing other stuff. But I find that, you know, in doing that, I'm able to take two days solidly off and I look forward to it and I love it and I protect it, you know, with my life because I know ultimately, if not, my mind can be in that state of flux and my physical health. And to provide the best level of service that I can, I have to be in that good mindset. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And actually, I'm a bit, I'm a huge proponent of a three-day weekend. Mm -hmm. I feel like two days is not enough for a human <laughs> To, I, I like, want to get to the stage where it's like the, the, the six day weekend, you know? <laughs> right? I would love that. One work day. Great. Awesome. Well, that's why we're trying to automate everything. That's why people try to do that now. <laughs> yes. So I do want to touch on something that you mentioned about how you worried yourself sick. Yeah. Um, this is something I, I learned growing up is you can literally make yourself sick with stress mm -hmm. um your mind is a very very powerful muscle in your body and you can literally and it, it goes back to affirmations to like speaking things into existence you can literally think yourself into an illness um so that's really why controlling your thoughts are so so important because if you don't and you just let them run rampant you can end up physically ill from them, which then impacts all the other work that you are, you know, needing to get done. Um, I want to touch on actually what we, the process we went through yesterday. So like I said, this is really ironic that, and, and this is just how great John is. He recognized that this was something I'm going through and that I need to like work through this. And so yesterday I, I, I messaged him and I was like, I'm panicking. I have so much on my plate. And we went through this motion, this process of just being like, okay, what do you have on your plate? Let's list them all out. And then it was, okay, what's going to benefit you right now? And what do you want in your life down the line? Like, what are the things that in the future are going to benefit you? And I feel like initially when I wrote everything out, I was like, <laughs> it was like seeing it in black and white. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. lot. That's a lot of stuff. But then as I worked through the other steps of the process, that's when things became clear. And I was, cause right now my hardest thing is just trying to find the thing that is going to bring me the most income right now, which that's hard too. When you're juggling financial security and, and passion that I feel like that's everybody's career problem, but, um, but it's, it's kind of whittling it down to, okay, what do you need to do right now? What, what can you make time for that's going to help you in the future? And what do you just have to drop? Like, what are the things that you would love to do, but you literally have no, no capacity for? And it's really being honest with yourself about it. But that process, I feel like is such a great tool to get you to kind of narrow your focus figure out what is perfect and right for you right this second so that way you're not just like going all over the place because I was I was here and there and backwards <laughs> sideways upside down and I felt like there was a lot more than there actually is because when I wrote it down I was like okay, maybe that's not actually as much work as I thought it is I can do it this way so um definitely a great 
process to go through if you're feeling that way. <laughs> and, and it's true. And sometimes folks, you know, and, and, and I know Alicia, you know, originally yesterday it was a bit panic mode and it's like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. You know, and I get that because believe it or not, I have gone through that. I go through that from time to time where I'm looking at things and there's so many opportunities, there's so many things that come on and it's fantastic and I love it. And it's a really great position to be in. But in my mind, I then examine and say, okay, are we making a living from this? You know, are we are we creating, you know, enough income here where this is actually a viable thing? And is it going to be in the future? Um, with wrestling art, for example, I had to make the hard decision. I loved wrestling. I grew up on it, but I found it didn't align with my, my purpose. It didn't match my own moral code now. And it wasn't exactly something that was a positive thing in the universe that I thought, hmm, I want to invest my time into this. Um, <laughs> But we've still got a great audience that's there. So every now and then I'll put out a, a picture or, or I switch to digital art because I can do it on my phone. And I was like, okay, let's build this up. Let's make this into something unique and special that takes less time. But honestly, you know, that was something that I had to make a hard decision about and say, you know, this just doesn't, I, I don't see this in my future and for what's going on. Um, and the same with outreach art, you know, in terms of art tutorials, there's a million people out there and a million organizations literally that are teaching, you know, art all over the world. And I got to the point, I was like, you know, they're doing it, they're, they're creating art tutorials cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, which is making people second guess everything. It seems in the world now we've got a billion artists um, that are out there. And I got to the point, I was like, nah, okay. I mean, there's enough money there for everybody for sure. But I was like, is this something I want to dedicate my time to in this way? And I was like, no, but art therapy for uh, mind, body and soul and for, for teenagers and, and for, for folks for uh, from a coaching point of view, I thought that aligns with my purpose. So I had the conversation with myself. Maybe I can't remember if we talked about this the other week. Um, obviously I need to tell you what it is first and then you can answer that. I was like, I sat down, I literally just got out the shower and I sat down and I said to myself, my main focus right now is mind, body and soul, teenage and family life coaching. And I said, you know, because again, like Alicia, I was pulled in every different direction that could be, and it was making me miserable and making me frustrated. And I just sat there and I said, right, what am I doing now that actually aligns with this? So business, right? I can teach teenagers and families how to do business and I can do that very, very well. I need the business skills, right? What about art? Well, the creative style, yeah, that's going to get attention and that's going to get people and teenagers fired up and excited about things. Yeah, okay, that's in there. Um, what about, you know, wrestling? And I thought, nah, is, is the wrestling audience the kind of audience that I'm going to probably be working with? Nah, probably not. So that was one of the things that was dropped. Um, there were several other things that I looked at and I said, what about writing and, and being an author? I said, well, yeah, that makes sense because you're communicating people through audio books, through visual and through all the other technology that's there. I thought, that makes sense. So everything then... I had, you know, a core, which was life coaching and personal development coaching and everything else that goes on around that. And then the other stuff that surrounded it, I was like, and that took the pressure off because I'm like, this is the goal. This is what we're doing going forward. Um, because I've been in the art business for a long time. It's changing. It's developing for sure. But also with the uh, recession that's going on, the economic structure, the financial structure is changing. The money is still out there, but you've really got to be smart to figure it out because there are you know, like I said, there's a billion other artists that are trying to do this. Um, so again, it's figuring it out. It's knowing the business skills that are there. Um, but once you get to that point of, you know, being able to see really clearly what's on your page, you know, it does take some of the pressure off to the point that you can breathe. And if you work five days in a week, um, you know, one day I might be painting pets, another, another two days I might be working on mind, body and soul, you know, the other days I might be doing, you know, interviews and, and whatever else is there. But when you break it up, it stops it from being so overwhelming. And I think that helped you certainly, Alicia. Yeah, definitely. I, like I mentioned before, I'm a visual person and I need to see things. Um, and I feel like I even forget sometimes to just, to just do it. <laughs> and actually that's something we talked about last week as well. It's just, you sometimes just have to just make yourself do it. Um, and then, you know, obviously you can go from there, but uh, I think the last thing that I just wanted to touch on with that is, is goal setting, which mm -hmm. is kind of what you talked about a little bit is when you have all of these things going on and you're trying to whittle through it, um, really having a strong 
when in my name when you know when we talk about like why are you doing this it's your why like what is your reason your goal um really knowing your solid goal your solid why I think is what's going to help break down just like you did like okay I have this how is this going to help me I have this how is this going to benefit do I want to do this how is this you know whatever the end goal is so I think that's a perfect that's a really great starting place yeah. if you're going to be going through that process that, met, that mental process yeah and, and it is and you know once you've got the goal it'll do two things um the, the first thing that it'll do it'll mean when the storms of life come along and, and like Alicia was uh, alluding to a little bit there when we're in the storms of life it's very difficult to see you know, the light. And I liken it to being in the center of a tornado. Um, I've been in many storms before and, and I love it. It's a weird sensation. <laughs> Never been in the center of a tornado, but I can imagine it. But, you know, when you're in this thing, all you can see is swirling wind and debris and you can't see the light and the light is straight up. If you actually look up in the middle of a tornado, you can see straight up on the clouds. Um, random fact. But, you know, when you're able to do this and you keep focused, you keep on purpose, you know, you set your goal and you say, you know, in my case, we're focused on teen life coaching and Alicia's case, she's got, you know, different goals that are there, you know, and it's, it's really important then we keep to those goals, we keep focus and we let the universe, God, divine spirit, you know, sort out the details. And this is what actually happens when you focus on a goal the reason a lot of people don't succeed at their goal is because they stop halfway through we're going to talk about this momentarily with transitions um and they stop halfway through and the amount of times that i have gone back to uh you know staff and team and, and other people and said i wonder if we just kept on that little bit longer whether or not that's where the big success would have come from you know we've gone through many transitions in a business over the years and this is where we're at now so once you get it you know really figured in your mind um, you know, stick with it. It's really important. The as, as we talked about last week, the most successful people, not necessarily financially, not necessarily, you know, from a, a monetary point of view, or just from a monetary point of view, but they're, they're the people that make a decision, think about that decision for a long time, make the decision, and then they very rarely ever pivot from these different things. Why? Because if you sow a seed, and then you sow 50 other seeds around it, you know, do you really think that that seed is going to grow up into something amazing? No, you're going to have just a bundle of stuff all over the place. So is there anything else that you want to add to that, Alicia? Um, no, I think that's actually a perfect transition into transitions. Transitions <laughs> into transitions. Okay, well, Alicia, you're going through a transition right now, aren't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so many transitions. Well, actually, no. It's not as many as it could be. I have to keep that in mind. But you yeah, do. the transition. See, that's the thing. Yeah. Even when we're joking, <laughs> now I have to catch everything because I'm just, I say the exact same, oh, it's, you know, it's this, it's that. And, and we, we have a tendency to be dramatic, probably as artists and creative minds. But now I catch myself and I'm like, no, actually it's not. And it's not that big a thing. But Alicia, I want to ask you with the transitions that you're going through, not so much today, more yesterday, how did you feel about all the transitions that you were going through? Before we chatted, I, I was, I was, I was overwhelmed. I actually woke up, I woke up stressed and I, I know that I did. And I was just feeling, I don't know, like, I don't want to say hopeless, but just like lost. Like I yeah. really just felt lost. Like I did not. I'm glad you use that word. No, I really am. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know which direction I'm going. And I feel like I know I've mentioned this before. I, I was always the type of person that knew where I wanted to go. I knew what my career was going to be. I was dead set on it. I was focused. And I said this to my mom yesterday. I know, and she knows I don't do well in transitions. I don't do well with change. I've gotten better over the years. Um, I, I root that back to like, um, moving around a lot, around a lot as a kid, but yeah, transitions just aren't good for me. And then when you compound that with like financial yeah. dependencies and all this other like adult stuff, it makes it harder and <laughs> even scarier. So yeah, before, like before I talked to you, I just felt lost. Like I think that's, if I boil it down to one word, lost is how I, I, I felt <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's actually a really, that, and, and that's common. Uh, it's actually really good in some ways that you've used that word specifically lost. <laughs> um, folks, I want you to grab a pen and paper if you haven't already, because um, 
this is a teaching that you really don't want to miss. Uh, we're going to put the link up for uh, this week's product of the week, and it's it's a book called Transitions. Um, it's a book that was given to me by uh, my mentor. Um, he actually shares the same name with me, uh, but he's about you know fifty years older. Um, transitions are a really interesting part of life and they are unavoidable and the crazy thing is we can't always get comfortable with transition i know folks we always want to get comfortable with things but we can't sometimes get comfortable with transition before we do it sometimes things happen in our life like relationships break up or marriages break up or kids have issues or you know whatever it might be and there's a transition all of a sudden but transition is a three-stage process um, every now, this, this is going to sound a bit backwards, but bear with me um, and trust me in this. I'm a psychologist in training, after all. So every <laughs> beginning begins with an ending. So, for example, when you are born, it's the end of pregnancy. When you are a child, it's the end of baby stage. When you're a teenager, it's the end of child. When you're an adult, it's the end of uh, teenage stage and when you become a grandparent it's I, I can't say it's the end of parenthood because you never stop being a parent but it's the end of one way of life and into the other when you retire it's the end of your working life in theory at least um, but it's basically the end of one way of life the end of one way of being and the beginning of a new one so that's stage one stage two is the stage that Alicia is in and I have found myself in <laughs> numerous times it's called the neutral zone or realignment. Now, my wife actually hates the phrase realignment because for the last five years, I seem to have been saying, it. we're in the building stage, love, we're in the realignment stage. It's like, we always seem to be in the realignment stage. The realignment <laughs> stage can be likened to the reality stage where you wake up one morning and you think, oh my goodness, I've made this decision. I've left my job. I've left high school. I've left, you know, home or whatever it might be. And it's like, oh my goodness, this is really scary. It's the proverbial no man's land. It is the psychological void, shall we say. It's, it's like waking up and just being like, everything around you is alien and uncomfortable. Now they say when businesses go through this and a business for whatever, and this is the importance of getting an idea and sticking to it, providing it's a good idea, of course. But they say when businesses go through this realignment process, 80% of the people working for them actually quit because they don't like, it's really uncomfortable. It's a horrible place to be sometimes, even if the change is good. You know, people that are losing weight, people that are stopping smoking, people that are stopping drinking, people that are taking up activities and sports and all that kind of stuff. It does it for a certain amount of time when it's exciting. And then when that realignment period kicks in and you have to go to the gym or you're craving a cigarette, I don't know, I've never, never smoked, so I couldn't tell you this, um, or you're craving your next drink, you know, that's when it becomes really, really difficult for a lot of people. So that's stage two is the realignment process, which is the process where you feel lost. It's like, this is all new to me. It's all weird and it's all overwhelming. So stage three, like developing any muscle, and that's something I can talk a lot about. It has to grow. It has to change. It has to develop. And when you get to stage three, it's coming out of the old way of being, the realignment process, and you develop in the new way. You unplug from the old way of being and you plugging into the new way of being, where you actually realize, oh, wait, this maybe isn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. We always make things bigger in our head than it ever actually is. Uh, because we magnify it. And that's, again, why it's important to catch your thoughts. Thoughts are fundamental. Thoughts are everything. Um, and once we accept the transition begins with letting go of something um, that we, you know, maybe want to hold on to or recognizing there is a need to let this thing go, we can actually begin to, you know, really welcome this change and be like, oh, this is actually a really, really good thing. And, it takes some time, it takes some adjustment, it takes some adapting. People around me have had to adapt to me in my new way of being, in my new way of thinking, because I'd, I'd been an artist for 20 years. Now I'm going into the, uh, to the realms of psychology and life coaching. It's a different thing. Plus, when you say to people, I'm a psychologist in training, they look at you as if you're three heads, because it's, it's one of those tabo to, taboo weird things that everybody thinks that you're actually analyzing them. And I'm like, trust me, I've already been on it. Well, I, well, with one person, actually, I blurted this out without thinking it was late at night. And this person was really, um, I'm trying to choose the, the right words. They, they were kind of um, self-centered. Let's go with that one. 
Um, yeah. And, you know, without thinking, <laughs> my change had just started to take place. Um, but I actually blurted out to this person, I've been analyzing you for the last three hours. And truthfully, you're not that interesting. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, oh, that was one that went down well. And everyone just burst out laughing. But I was oh, like, no, I apologize. That's not, that's not putting out peace. <laughs> it's not putting out peace. Um, but knowing these stages now, Alicia, does that help you? Obviously, the three stages in transition. Yeah, definitely. And actually, it's I was making a couple of notes about what I wanted to, to mention. And, and one of the things is that I remember going through this transition period um, when I left home. Yeah. And actually, I thought like this is a really great thing to throw in considering we're, we're targeting teens and especially those teens go. And I, I'd like to think teens going into their adult years yeah. because- those, I feel like the twenties are, are, are a freaky time because you're like expected to know so much, but you don't. <laughs> but I remember the feeling of the excitement of want of leaving home, finding the apartment, going apartment searching, moving in. Cool. Awesome. Great. And then the reality set in yeah. and I was, you have this, like, I feel like when you leave home for the first time, there is this innate thing in you. That's like, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm yeah. supposed to be home yeah. or, or what you thought was home or, you know, yeah. what, you know, we'll always be home, but you have a new home now. That was a rough transition period for me because I, I'm a very family centered. I'm very home bodied. So that was a really rough stage for me. But I remember literally that unplug and replug and feeling finally like, okay, this is, this is my new norm. I'm happy with this. I still see my family. I still go over to my mom's house all the time. Nothing re really has like changed. Yeah. So I remember going through that process and getting to that point. So just remembering how I processed through that, I feel like definitely put a new perspective on how to go through this, um, to, you know, take every step as it is as hard as it may be because eventually i will hit that unplug replug moment yeah. and things will feel fine <laughs> after a time so i think if there if you have an experience like that that you went through in the past and you're going through one now really focus on how did you handle that mm -hmm. what did you do well what did you not do well and then try to apply that to the to the situation that you're in now because that definitely helped me and to just know that eventually like innately <laughs> as a human you will get used to it and that unplug and replug will happen <laughs> See, I mean, I completely agree because, I mean, I, I I didn't have the luxury of having my folks around because they were like four or five hundred miles from where I was. Uh, they're down in England. I'm up in Scotland. And yeah. I was going out on the streets uh, and I was, you know, going for a walk and things and literally being like, I'm not meant to be here. You know, I, I literally felt like I was going into places that I was not meant to be. Yeah. And it's the weirdest feeling ever now. I mean, I don't bother about it. But, you know, at that time it was like, oh, wow. But there's something, guys, actually, there's, there's two things just to, to wrap up this uh, particular section that, that you need to know and to, to give you any comfort for, from me to you and for, from us to you is the inward psychology, believe it or not, takes time to adjust. Now, you might be like, John, what the heck does that mean? You're using big speak, right? When you look around, say, for example, you move house, your external world, everything that you see outwardly has changed. So, you know, you know, we moved here. We've now got a fence. We've got a beautiful garden. We've got gardens around us. We've got flowers and all that kind of stuff. Great. Internally, I still felt like I was in the flat, you know, or apartment three towns over. And because I was so used to being in that apartment, it was like, wow. That was, and, and it took time for me to enjoy being in a bigger house and for me to enjoy the new roles and the different things that was going on. That's the part that takes time. Your external world may change and you may um, appear to be, oh, I'm very comfortable with this, but it's the internal stuff mm -hmm. that takes time to really work through. Yeah. Um, and again, if we could give you any facts, guys, it would be don't forget that it does take time to adjust. Um, you, many people, and this is really important as well, many people want to rush or bypass the neutral zone or the, the you know, place of uh, no man's land or be discouraged when it doesn't appear to work. But it's really important that you stick it out. It's very, very important because otherwise the change doesn't take place. Um, yeah. Yes, it's frightening. Yes, it's scary. And yes, it feels overwhelming. But just keep reminding yourself, look, the change that I have accepted into my life 
this is the reason why I wanted to make that change in the first place. Keep reminding yourself of the change um, and the reason that you're doing it. And uh, I guess, you know, the, the you know, couple of questions that I had actually when we spoke about this, you know, how long does it take for a transition to take place? Well, it depends on the size of the transition, you know, <laughs> and the willingness to change, of course. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it, that, yeah, I would say it's a, a fairly fairly simple one. Um, but each each part, you know, has every part of our life has a, a season and a transition. Sometimes feel like winter, you know, where you know it's miserable and it's cold. But just remember that it's winter where the roots grow and they take shape for for spring, um, right. leading into summer as well. And it's where the old goes and the new emerges. So, is there anything you want to add to that, Alicia? Or yeah i love that analogy i think about that a lot about like seasons um i live in a place where we get all four seasons luckily and i love it that's why i, I stay in central new york um but i do love that because it is true you know when you think about the cycles of of life that's exactly what it is and i think the thing i wanted to to kind of hark or you know really kind of nail down with what you said is that that neutral zone that transition time it's I like to look at it as a learning experience and I feel like everything should be looked at is yeah. like that. But like I mentioned with, you know, moving out of the house, that was a learning experience that wasn't necessarily fun to go through, but now I have that, that skill set, those tools to now apply to this. So it was that learning experience. It, so I feel like that sometimes makes that neutral zone transition a little bit easier to at least know, okay, fine. This sucks. It's going to be hard. But the next time I go through this, it's not going to be as hard. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I think that's a great way to look at it is to learn the lessons that's there. We, we touched about this on, on Saturday's teen life coaching session, um, you know, and again, it, it's the whole thing of, yes, you know, you may have gone through really crappy times. But, you know, if, if you look at it of the lessons that you learn, um, you know, being, you know, relocated by my best friend taught me how to be self-reliant, taught me how to deal with a lot of things myself. Um, you know, Alicia's experience in, you know, moving and being, you know, going through those transitions taught her the same things, you know, in terms of how to be more reliant on yourself, how to, you know, um, you mature very quickly in those in those situations. And, and it really, it, it does change things for you folks. So we want, we want you to remember with, with transitions, every beginning begins with an end. Um, no man's land, that is a period that's, you know, we, we've all got to go through. Uh, and it's the adjustment period and the change will complete itself, but you've got to stick with it. And when it does, you'll actually be in a better position, hopefully, than, than obviously where you were before. So anything Absolutely. you want to add for just randomly for before we wrap up today's show? Um, I think that's it. Just, you know, like John said, everything will eventually work itself out. And it's just taking, rolling with the punches sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And, and sometimes you got to do that, folks. So first, I want to thank you for watching as always. Uh, she has been Alicia Madonna. I have been your host, John Morris. Don't forget to come and check us out at thebattlesweallface.com. Do all the good stuff, like, like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend because it could be the very thing that helps them in their darkest hour. And you can also support the network and the show on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash mind, body, and soul. And we've got some great exclusive goodies for you over there on Patreon. You can do that. It helps us. It helps you guys. And it means that you guys continue to get the best quality and the best presentation and life coaching that we can put together. And this is all done in real time. So you get to see exactly what it would be like. So until next week, I'll try that again. Until next week, guys, have an amazing one. And we will both catch you at the same time, same place next week. Take care. Bye, everybody.